Welcome, grade six, to lesson 1.6. We're coming to the end of the lesson. I think there's only eight in this one. On this one, what we're going to do is we're going to get you to draw a graph. Now, we're going to be doing what's called a point graph, so you're not going to have to make bars or anything like that. It's just plotting the points like you would if you were doing and playing Battleship and you had to keep track of where you shot. So, not too difficult. The students are going to graph the pattern of sequence of objects from objects or from table of values. That just means I'm going to give you a set of, of uh, 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 figures, or I'm just going to give you the table itself. So let's start with the first part here. In this lesson, you're going to go one step further than just creating the expression and creating the table of values. The next step you're going to now do is you're going to graph the relation. You're going to plot this coordinate pair system like we did playing Battleship. So create the table of values for the number of squares for the pattern below. So this one here, the table of values is the figure. So the input is the figures. So you have one, two, three, four. So there's my inputs. And my outputs, the first one has one square, the second one has four, the third one has nine, and the fourth one has 16. Now, this is your input-output. We know that we're multiplying by itself, so at one times one, two times two, three times three, four times four. So the coordinate pair would be the uh, battleship pair of numbers you would use to plot. So the input is always the first number, one, and the output is always the second number. So what ends up happening here is you get a pair, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and 4, 16. Now, we know this relation from before because we've already done this one. This is the input times the input. So you're going to be given a graph like this. Here's your input down here, and there's your output on the left-hand side. So you're going to plot this just like we did in Battleship. 1, 1 would be here. Now, wait a minute. If you look, Oh, wait, look, there's no 1 there. That means you're going to have to make a little bit of a judgment call here. You're going to have to go between the 2 and the zero and put the one in the middle. So if I was doing this one, this would be one, one would be one, one right there. Now you don't, in, because it didn't say to label it, all you do is just plot the point. All right, so let's go to the next page. So to plot these points, the first thing you do is one, one, and you can see that all I've done here is one, one is right kind of mixed up. Oh, sorry. One, one should be down here, two should be at four, three should be at nine, and four should be at 16. My plot here, one, one, is a little too high, but that's not a big deal. All right, I'll, move, I'll have to change that later. All right, so there's your outputs, there's your inputs. So you just plot the points, and that's all you get. You can get, this is called an exponential curve, and we'll talk more about that in grade uh, 10, I guess it is. Okay, so let's go on to another example. This is a, fa a set of blocks, and there is a hole in the middle. All right. So we have figures, again, right here. Their inputs are the number of figures, one, two, three, four. So what we need to do is get you to put the output and the coordinate pair in place. So I'll pause the recording, and I want you to fill in the outputs and, the in and the make up the coordinate pairs. All right, here we go. So one is eight, two is 12 squares, three is 16 squares, and four is 20 squares. Putting them together as coordinate pairs, there you go, 1, 8, 2, 12, 3, 16, 4, 20. And now the only thing left to do is to play Battleship. There you go, 1 and 8, 2 and 12, 3 and 16, and 4 and 20. Now this type of graph is not necessarily going to be available at the front of the classroom. So you'll probably have to get one of the blank ones and create it yourself, okay? So you just basically go up here by twos and go over here. Uh, sometimes this graph here probably looks like I've skipped a line here, so it's, uh, I go and put a number on every second line just to space it out a little bit. Okay? So how would you describe this graph? This is the next part of this lesson. You have to be able to give someone the description so that they can create your graph without having any trouble. And what that does is it goes back to telling somebody about the table here that we created. Oh, here we are, right here. Go to the table. They have to be able to recreate this table. So to do this, we have to go back to the input, output, and the rules that we did. So we have to tell them, number one, where do you start at? So we're going to be starting at the point 1, 8. So down here, starting at 1, 8. Now, first thing, let's start with the x input. What's going on here? Well, x is going up by 1. So as the input goes up by 1, what does the y do? The y goes up by 4. So this is the description. I can recreate that table from this simple piece of three 
three pieces of information. I can start at 1 8, so I go to my table and I go 1 8, just put it in. And then it says here, as the input goes up by 1, okay, so I know my input's going to go up by 1, so I just got to go 1, 2, 3, 4. The output goes up by 4, so I just got to count by 4, starting at 8, 12, 16, 20, and I'm done. I can now plot this graph. Everything is now available simply because I've given this description here. Let's go to the next one. All right. Sometimes the relationship between the input and the output is not given in a diagram or a table. Sorry, not in a diagram. It just strictly is given to you in a table. So this is what you would normally be given. You don't normally get the coordinate pair. But you have to understand that if you're given 1 and 4, 2 and 6, 3 and 8, 4 and 10, that the pairs are 1, 4, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 10. Now all you have to do is go and plot it. So I'd like you to plot this graph, please. All right, so this is what it looks like. All right, got one and four, so go over one, up four, go over two, up six, go over three, up eight, go over four, up ten. Remember, these are in order. One is on the x-axis, that's the one down here, and the second number is always up. It's always over and up, over and up. All right, now, if it's done correctly, everything will go great. Now, how do I describe this? Now, remember, I want to recreate that table here. So starting at a location, I'm starting at 1, 4. So that's my first thing I'm going to put down. Starting at 1, 4, now what's the input? The input is going up by 1s. So as the input goes up by 1, the output goes up by 2s. So that is my description here. Starting at 1, 4, as the input goes up by 1, the output goes up by 2. There's your description. 1, 2, 3 marks. Real straightforward. And that means... It's time for your assignment. So if you have any questions, go back and watch it again or come and talk to me. And uh, we'll see you in lesson 1.7. So take care.